सुखदं मरणं करुणं मिलनं मधुरं स्मरणं करुणं कालवश्यादिह सकलं करुणं समयादिपते अखिलं करुणं नमस्कारम नमस्कारम टू एवरीवन Well, as a large part of the world tries to get back into activity, still, due to the nature of what's happening, the activity is not picking up as it should. Even in India, There are many, there are many more things that need to happen to get the activity back. It will take a few months. But as this is happening, as humans are trying to believe things are getting normal, the number of cases in the world, positive cases in the world, has crossed seven million. The official death numbers have crossed four hundred thousand. I'm sure it's much more. <clears throat> India has had the highest spike in number of cases in the last twenty-four hours, over ten thousand. Though uh, the positive is it's all contained in a few cities, so it's easier to contain it rather than spread all over the world, country. United States, has uh, crossed a million and a half, I think, am I right? Number of cases has co crossed a million and a half. Deaths have crossed hundred and twelve thousand. Apart from that, the unfortunate and enduring problem of racial discrimination And the reactions to that is also taking a toll on the nation at a time like this. On the basis of color, creed and caste, much suffering has been imposed. Much blood has flown, too many lives have been taken. But still the problem endures. Largely, by law, world has become equitable, largely. There are still some nations which are religious republics where by law there is discrimination. But nations have matured in terms of law or in their constitution. But many individual human beings, a substantial number of them unfortunately, uh, refuse to evolve. And they continue the same prejudices, same discrimination and same selective cruelty, either because of color, creed or caste. To fight for equitable laws is completely a different process. But to transform individual human beings is a totally different process. 
One must understand India's independence movement. Till then you must know, there was an effective apartheid process in this country. And then the civil rights movement in the United States, they fought in a, a different style because they were fighting against unjust laws. Now the laws have been fixed, but the injustice in human minds and hearts are not gone. This cannot be done by fighting on the street. This is a, a lot more difficult work. This is about raising human consciousness, about transforming human beings into more conscious and sensitive to all life. We must understand this. I'm cruel to the pigs, but I'm nice to the people is not going to work. Because once there is selective cruelty in your ha heart, one day you will call some human being a pig and do the same things to him. It's... it's not far away. So this is very important that human consciousness has to evolve, human consciousness has to be risen and there must be sensitivity to all life. Well, I chose the example of pigs because uh, just now videos have been circulating everywhere because the meat market in America is down. In some farm, which is a piggery industry, because it cannot be sold, but how long to just keep on feeding them? So they decided to kill a few hundred or thousand pigs, it looked like hundreds of pigs. They decided to steam them to death, 140 degrees steam coming out, and the pigs are screaming away. It takes a long time for the steam to fill up and for them to die. And then, after the steam is taken out, a few pigs are still not dead, so man is going with a gun and shooting each one of them, those who are not dead yet. When we can do this to one creature, we can do it to another creature, and naturally it'll seep into other human beings that we don't like for whatever reason. Either because of their color, or caste, or creed, we don't like them, and we will do the same things. So the sensitivity has to be towards life itself, not towards this person, that person, a specific problem. Well, in India, this has been going on for last few days. An elephant, a pregnant elephant was killed with a pineapple loaded with uh, firecrackers or some explosive, potassium nitrate. It's an explosive, it's not really a firecracker. Well, this was not aimed for the elephant. Now it happened to the elephant. The whole country's conscience is hurt and there's a whole, you know, uh, social media movement happening against it. But we must understand this was aimed towards the wild boar. Because certain communities have extreme aversion to the pigs, they don't want these pigs to enter their properties their lands, their... around their homes. So, they put these things and unfortunately, this elephant uh, picked it up and put it in its mouth and it exploded. And the elephant suffered for almost, I think about two weeks before it died. With a bleeding mouth, it starved itself to death. It came and stood in a small pond to cool its mouth in water and it died there standing. So seeing that everybody is moved, this is our problem that we are moved by one cruelty, we are not moved by another. So if it happens to me, it is cruelty, if it happens to you, it's not cruelty, it's the same thing. So if it happens to this creature, it is not cruel. If it happens to what I like, then it's a problem. So that is all racism is, that is all religious bigotry is, that is what casteism is. 
that if it happens to me, it hurts, or if it happens to what belongs to me, hurts, if it happens to them, it doesn't hurt. So this is not going to go away by just changing laws. This is about evolving human beings to a higher level of consciousness, to a more inclusive existence as such, a more sensitive life. Unfortunately, at a time like this, at a time like this, when there is a virus and people are dying, America has the highest number of deaths. At this time, unfortunately, this racism has exploded. Well, it is happening all the time. Nobody who has a darker shade of skin is completely immune to it. Even I'm not immune to it, when I go to America here and there, things happen. But this particular George, George Floyd case was too stark and cannot be ignored, just cannot be ignored because the way it happened. There's another video circulating right now of police shooting a black man's dog. Uh, there are too many things like this. This cannot be solved by fighting. This needs a social transformation, an individual evolution. In terms of social transformation, I know many people will become angry with me if I say this, but I have one thing that must immediately happen in the next three to five years is, with a certain scheme from the government or whatever, in every precinct there must be a certain number of African-American, Hispanic policemen. This could level this to some extent, I'm not saying this will remove the problem, at least they could also do better law enforcement because they understand the communities, they have more access to those communities, they need not do policing all the time, they can do negotiations and handle crime also a little better because all crime is not murder, all crime is not bank robbery or something like this. There are many crimes which are committed by children, youth, women, uh, for various compulsions, those things can be easily handled if there is somebody who can talk to them, not somebody who just always has a hand on his gun. So, like this, some social situations can be changed, but without raising human consciousness, without making every human being far more sensitive to life, this is something every society in the world needs to think. If we want cruelty against human beings to go away, cruelty against animal animals also need to go away. Right now I feel we are treating the animals wantonly. That also translates into treating other human beings like that. It's very easy to do that when you're doing it to one creature, doing it to another one is not very far away. I think this needs to be addressed in a more fundamental way and this movement should not be now how long will you protest on the streets? Maybe fifth, right now already twelve days, maybe twenty days you will do it, then it will die out. That is not the way it should be. When no such incident happens, it's 365 years of the day, it must be kept up, not on the street, but wherever we are, in whichever position we hold, whatever place we hold in a society, whatever responsibilities we hold there, there it must be kept up, that's the only way you can change this, just protesting for a certain number of times may not work, but now it is understandable that people are angry. When people are angry, they will not always do sensible things. It is very, very important that now that it's not about one man's life, there is a history, a few hundred years of enormous suffering inflicted upon people. So, this correction cannot happen overnight as a generation of people if we are committed to making this happen. Before our time is up, we can leave this world with much less prejudice. It is very much possible to do that. Well, <clears throat> uh, there has been lots of, uh, you know, all kinds of inquiries and uh, comments and everything about 
this Sadhguru exclusive which has been put out, a few pictures out there. Why this came up is, well in the last six, seven years time or little more than that maybe, uh, my predicament has become like this. Wherever I go, it's large numbers of people. Whether these darshans or satsangs, almost everything is webcast, it's on the television. When I come and sit in a place in a certain way, it's natural for people to burst forth. Some will scream, some will roll, some will go crazy. Otherwise, what's the use of me? I'm not some scholar, I'm not going to preach you some Vedas or scriptures or something, I don't know a damn thing, all right? The significance of who I am is if I come and sit here, something within you must tremble, otherwise what's the point? But we've been holding back because a certain num percentage of people will start screaming and rolling, a certain percentage of people are fearful and they don't know what is happening because not all of them have ever gone through the same number of experiences and programs. There are different kinds of people. There are fresh people who have just come today. There are just people who have done online programs. There are people who have been through immense amount of experience. Oh, all sitting together, we are not able to do justice. And uh, these days, uh, just talking, talking, talking and going, we're not able to do any meditative processes because a few people will scream anyway. Holding down, holding down, holding down. So I thought uh, we will create a group of uh, a little more exclusive group where they can do whatever the hell they want. <clears throat> And also, and also, you know, everything that is said, <laughs> a, a daily quote, a mystic quote that goes out or a poem that goes out, uh, all kinds of people in the Twitter, in the Instagram, all kinds of lumpen are making comments about it without understanding a thing. For example, right now this poem, Life, which came out a couple of days ago, I think, you seen this? So this is talking about a certain aspect of life. But now I get comments from United States, at a time like this, Sadhguru should not write a poem like this. We are on the streets protesting, people are dying of corona. Now he says, uh, the most restless ones rest so well when life is taken out of them, as if the only curse was life. What is this talking about and what are you talking about? I'm saying you're trying to find connection between mysticism and uh, current s situations in the society today. So playing this role of being uh, <laughs> socially that, well, I'll continue to play that on one level, but time is coming where it's very important that there is a space for unbridled expression, not about political things, social things, simply about... See, there are two aspects in the Indian culture. They divided two things, two dimensions of knowing. One is called Shruti, another is called Smriti. What Shruti means is, Shruti actually means a very refined sound. So, sound can only be heard, sound cannot be written, sound cannot be understood, sound cannot be explained, sound can only be heard. This simply means something that's direct perception. It is faultless, it is the way it is. It doesn't matter if the whole world agrees with it or disagrees with it, the way it is, is the way it is. This is the dimension of spiritual process and mysticism because it's direct perception. It is not a scripture, it is not a religion, it is not a philosophy, it is not a new ideology. It is just what you perceived. 
Smriti is a reflection. Over a period of time, what is one person direct perception, other people reflect, think about it, interpret it in many different ways, make it socially relevant for that day. That is the job of scholars. So, when there is no distinction between smrit, uh, Shruti and Smriti, then it'll go out of tune. The sound, the purity of the sound will go away. So, we thought we will do Sadhguru exclusive, people are commenting, Sadhguru always said inclusive, how can he do exclusive? <laughs> you know, people are getting their words from the dictionary straight, pure words, dictionary words. <laughs> so maybe we can change the title, I don't know if they've already invested too much on the exclusive title, but if you want to, we can make Sadhguru in close. <laughs> but now somebody will come up and say, there is no in close word in the dictionary. So what? <laughs> when there is no word like that in the dictionary, you can't give a commentary about it, it's my word. <laughs> Not enclose, enclose, I n close, enclose. Well, it's not my word. I think if I'm right, I'm not sure about this because I read this when I was in college, way, way back when I was at the university. It must be Emily Dickinson who used the word enclose, if I'm right. Uh, so we can use the word enclose, Sadhguru enclose if exclusive is hurting you. And anyway, in this exclusive or enclose, if you have for everything your... what I say, if you're relating it to today's social realities, you must not be in that. You should not be in that, because this is not... this is not smriti, this is not for you to reflect. This is for you to digest, to ingest and digest. That's the only way food works. Right now there are a lot of people analyzing food and they're unhealthy all the time. Because you have to ingest and you have to digest. That is the only way it works, that is the way life works. But social realities are different. So, we want to set up this thing probably in the next few weeks, it'll come out, more details will come out about it. Uh, they may set up a small cost to it just to see there is a small threshold, but it will be well within the reach of everybody. But if somebody is so hungry and... Uh, but they have not eaten for three days, only if they have not eaten for three days, it'll... we will make it free for them also, okay? <laughs> somebody is so hungry to know that they have paid for this and they could not eat for three days because of the payment. It's not three days payment, only one meal. So one meal you skipped and en enrolled into Sadhguru in close. It's okay, it's good for you. If you're hungry, you always digest things better, you know. You know this at the yoga center <laughs> So that should come out any time, but uh, those of you... I don't know at what number we want to stop, we've still not decided, still discussions are going on. So it will be on first come, first served basis. If you wish to be there, just register. Okay? Pre-register, rather. There are a few things that... Okay, you... Okay for one more painting? Mm -hmm. That's better. And also, because uh, the, the virus-related uh, services are still going on, 
and uh, it's extending into various other aspects, not just about giving food, because this year kick-starting rural education in Tamil Nadu is going to be a big challenge. With that intent, we are putting out a painting that we called Bhairava, which was done in the honor of uh, our Bhairava, who unfortunately was the first victim in the ashram of this virus. He was more of a... Mm, like uh, he did not die of virus, but because of this virus, we could not get a veterinarian to attend to him, so he passed away. So we're putting up this painting for uh, an auction, mm, because we need the money. This is uh, made of the background is cow dung, rest is charcoal, and a little bit of turmeric and lime has been used. So the entirely, it's a very organic painting, but it will... it will last. It will last better than acrylics. It will last forever. <clears throat> okay. It's not looking great out there, but <laughs> Anyway, there are also a few things we talked about the kavacha. I think the kavacha is ready. It should be... do we have them? And also... It is done with the Indian alchemy called rasavaidya. It's very effective in enhancing uh, general energy levels and above all the immunity will be much higher by using this. They are made of different sizes and uh, inside it has to be copper, but those of you who don't like to wear copper, you want to be seen in gold, you can have it gold-plated outside <laughs> So kavachas also will be available at the Isha shop. It'll take probably a week before we start dispatching them. And uh, Isha masks also have come, different designs. If you want to model for them, you can. I thought I will come with one today, but... <laughs> Are they there? Woo! There's a Yoga Yoga Yogeshwaraya chant on it. Ah. That's it. <laughs> That's my mask. <laughs> and also Inner Engineering, uh, for those of you who are in other parts of the world, Inner Engineering has been launched in Spanish, German with subtitles and French with a dubbed voice. The first question is a video question from a 12-year-old boy from South Africa. I'm Bashir Khamraj. I may look like I'm 16, but I'm 12 years old. While some kids choose to spend their time watching movies about fake heroes like Spider-Man and Batman, I choose to listen to a wise and amazing human. Get it? Human, human, uh, that is useful, Guruji. Sadly, not all kids are as intelligent as I am to make such wise choices. Ha 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 ha, ha 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 I have to laugh at my own jokes, nobody else does. <laughs> you know, Sad Guruji, I know that there are some people who think that there's nothing wrong in watching action movies. Go, sit and watch, go. On the TV, you're not dying. But does it affect us? 
How do action movies, wrestling matches, and playing violent games affect us in our day-to-day -day lives? Thank you. <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> Vashir Kemraj. What? Vashir Kemraj. Vashir. Uh, was it? <laughs> well, about the question, well, the level of violence that children are made to practice on a daily basis, I do not know the numbers and percentages, but from whatever, just glancing around when children are playing and just looking, seeing here and there, because it never happened very close around me. I see in the airports, in other places, even in the airplanes, children are playing. From my perception, I may be wrong, please tell me, nearly seventy, eighty percent is all about shooting somebody, am I correct? Uh, I, I don't see children playing with an animal or doing something on the... on the screen. All the time, ch -ch 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 shooting, shooting, shooting. Well, as a young child, if you shoot whatever number of people, let's say a hundred people, evil people of course, they come from... See, anybody who doesn't look like you is evil. This is what racism is. Somebody who doesn't look like you, you think you must take them out for some reason. So whether you're taking out a black man or you're taking out an alien, it's not any different. Because when African people came to Europe and America, they looked like aliens for those who had not seen them before. So, right now we think it's perfectly normal, the moment any aliens land on this, we must shoot them and burn them and do whatever terrible things to them. Well, this is racism. They look different, that's our only problem. So, when you practice this, you're only twelve, but you look like sixteen. No, no, that's your words, not mine <laughs> I didn't say that. So, when you become eighteen, you've been... if you've been shooting on the screen for eight, ten years, hundreds of people, when you become eighteen, wouldn't you like to see some real blood? You saw a lot in the movies, uh, you know, with the technology now, you're watching a movie, a bullet comes and tchew, brains explode. So that's not enough, you didn't get it. Next time, slow motion, the bullet comes slowly and the brains spill all over. Well, when you pay money to watch these things, we know what you're up to in your head. So when you sh blew a lot of brains till you were eighteen, at eighteen, wouldn't you want to get real? Wouldn't you want to see some real brains explode? Well, you're seeing it all over the place. When people go out simply shooting, young men just go out simply shooting, unknown people, anybody that they see they're shooting, you're wondering what happened, what happened? Well, they've been practicing for ten years. Why are you surprised? Why are you surprised? They've been practicing. Now they're just getting real. So, <laughs> I don't know, I could be wrong on the percentages because I've not seen enough movies. But once again, seventy to eighty percent of the movie cannot happen without somebody being either beaten to pulp or brains blown. Am I correct? 
percentage I'm asking. Definitely it's over fifty percent. I think it's seventy to eighty percent. Not... not even twenty, twenty-five percent of the movie can happen without smashing up somebody's face or blowing up somebody's brains or having his intestines spilling out. It cannot happen. A movie cannot happen. So once you create a culture like this, well, you just see, uh, there was a time, uh, at least in India, our heroes, the movie heroes I'm talking about, the cinema heroes, uh, were uh, gentle-looking men singing songs, running around the tree and, you know, <laughs> like that. Slowly it's become like this, a hero means uh, he has to be muscular and fit because he has to smash somebody. <tch> Heroic means you just see any... I'm, I've not seen the movies but I've seen the posters all over. Wherever you see he's like this, wanting to smash somebody. Whether he actually does or not is not the point. Definitely you are creating a culture of violence. You think this is the way to settle every emotion you have in your life. This is not just about beating somebody. You... you know, I've not watched any single... not a single one of those soap operas and things, but when I'm looking for news or something, sometimes I end up with this for ten, twenty seconds. I see some woman is screaming and throwing plates all over the place. A man is, you know, punching into a door or a wall. You are creating a culture that this is the way to settle your emotions. Well, human beings have emotions, but isn't there a more civilized and conscious way to settle our emotions? When something pokes us, some emotion may flare up in human beings. Isn't there a more civilized way to conduct this? No, just use four-letter words, throw things at people, smash food in people's faces, this become a fashion, smashing pe food into people's faces, smash utensils, break the doors. Uh, when you create such a scene all around you, obviously that is the kind of society you will live in. Still fortunately, fortunately, the society or the youth in the world are still not very strongly imitating the cinema and other entertainment, fortunately. If they imitate even ten, fifteen percent, the world will be a horribly violent place. So it's time those who call themselves entertainers, who are uh, not just making a living, they're uh, becoming super rich with this, they must have uh, some conscience as to what is the impact that they're creating. If you create violence, in the screen, it must be such that it must produce disgust that I must never be like this. There was a time in the Hindi cinema that there were people who were called as rape experts. In every movie, there has to be one rape, violent rape. Two, three actors were considered rape experts. Now, when rapes happen in the society, you're surprised. Well, you demonstrated. Millions of people, young people saw it, they thought this is the way to deal with a woman. They thought this is the way to deal with their desires, isn't it? So if you show people that whenever your emotions get flared up, this is the way to deal with it, you have to smash up somebody's face or blow off somebody's brains, if this is the example that you set, slowly that is the society you will have and you're beginning to have. And when it happens in your neighborhood, when it happens in your home, you're shocked. I'm surprised why you're shocked. Your television is on all the time, all the time it's happening and you're not shocked. And another dimension of this is, every day when you see people being shot and you're casually eating your potato chip and watching, watching people being shot, when actually if they're shot in front of you, you won't think much about it. It'll be just like normal, okay? You will not be shocked, you will not be outraged, you will not be propelled into doing something positive in that direction, 
because you think it's normal, because every day it's happening, because as technology gets better, the television is looking almost real or more real than real. As technology gets better, if it becomes 3D as they're promising it will, then these guys will be killing each other in your sitting room or your bedroom or in your dining hall, all right? So when actually people kill themselves or kill each other, it won't mean anything to you. This is not the way to nurture a society. Everybody, no matter what kind of activity we are doing, we have a responsibility to create a more stable, civilized and a conscious society. This is everybody's business. This cannot be just by done the gov by the government. What you write, what you create, what you do, what you speak, everything has to have this dimension. Otherwise, uh, well, when problems explode on the street, then you complain and cry, but what is the point? You've sown the seeds. Next question is from Junaid. Namaskaram Sadhguru. You had mentioned that in Indian culture, everything was geared towards mukti. How is poetry and art used in this direction? Oh. What is... <laughs> what is uh, poetic? You know, the word poetic is a very... It's a poetic justice. It's a very different thing. Well, I... I was in New York and... Uh, I visited a very famous artist. <coughs> it's a large painting. Large means about twelve feet by twelve feet kind of painting. And uh, there is just one... one line like that, diagonally. That's a painting. Maybe that is what inspired me to become a painting, <laughs> painter. <laughs> then I looked at this, such a large canvas, wasted. <laughs> Just one line. <laughs> I said, what is it? What is this supposed to be? See, it's a divide. The society is divided, the world is divided, so just this one line represents the divide. Well, uh, I thought, okay, if this can be art, well, even I'm capable. <laughs> Once it happened, Shankaran Pillai was going home. Then he suddenly remembered it was his wedding anniversary. There was a message on the phone. Then uh, he did something that he had never done in his life. He saw a florist. He went there and ordered a single rose. So, uh, the florist got talking and said, what are you proposing to somebody? He said, no, it's my wedding anniversary. Oh, then just one rose? He said, no, I'm a man of few words <laughs> So, uh, what is poetry? What is art? Essentially, these are aspects of our life which don't fit into a definition. That is why they're important. It... if you talk about poetry as language, poetry can be movement, dance can be poetry, you know, anything can be what you do, the very way you work can be poetry. But we're talking about written poetry. Now this is language, but it need not necessarily fit into the framework of language. Because language has certain framework. If you write prose, it has to fit into that. So those who don't know much grammar, much language like me, 
will always write poetry. Yes, because if you write prose, you have to fit into it. And uh, you are not in a mood to fit into frameworks, so you write poetry. And also, this art and poetry are two things which allow you to somewhere break the limitations of your own logic. If you write something in prose, I can't think of a... Uh, uh, a kind of a... Uh, an opposite for artwork. Prose and poetry are opposites to each other in a way. If you write in prose, it has to be logically correct, you can't write illogical things. But poetry, you can express things which are not logically correct, but may be true within you. Maybe you're trying to explore dimensions which cannot be expressed in proper framework of logic. I think the same is true with artwork, that it gives you a format where you can break your own logical process. In that sense, does it help you, does it help one to find some kind of uh, access to something possible? But I feel for most people it is more an expression than an exploration. For some it is an exploration, for most it is an expression. If it's an exploration, then you shouldn't worry whether somebody reads it or not, somebody appreciates it or not, it is your exploration. As long as it helps you to break the framework of your own logic and touch dimensions, which are not logically correct, but which are hundred percent true with life. In some way, if you're using art and poetry as an exploration, definitely it assists you towards your freedom, to your liberation, as a means, as one more means. But if it's an expression, it's like any other expression in life, maybe a word that you speak or what you write or what you do any number of things, how many ways human beings express, this is just one more form of expression. I wouldn't like to place it above other dimensions of expression. Somebody may just smile and that smile may be worth more than all the artwork on the planet. So I do not... I do not like to place one's expression or one form of expression as a higher form of expression than the other, there is no such thing. One may not know how to smile, they may just stand there like this. Well, that expression may be worth more than all the smiles in the world. So one form of expression is not higher than another form of expression. But if it is a tool for your exploration, well, one can use it. The next question is from Ramya. Namaskaram Sadhguru. How does raising energies through Kriya help in working out the prarabdha? Sadhguru, in close. <laughs> oh. This is what I was talking about some time ago. See, uh, <laughs> people's idea of civilization or so culture or socially, what to say, uh, a compromised behavior, they think they must be neutral about everything. This happened. You heard of... I'm getting into political trouble. You heard of Babri Devi government, hmm? Bihar. Babri Devi was the chief minister for a 
few years. It was considered the most or perfectly neutral government because it did not even interfere in its own affairs. <laughs> so people are becoming like this <laughs> Now if we raise energy, different people will behave differently, some will become still, some will shake, some will roll, some will crawl, some will scream. Some will open their eyes like that, some cannot open their eyes, all kinds of things. Because uh, when extra energy is pumped into something, depending upon where that machine is right now, in what kind of condition, what kind of issues, they have, this is a complex machine, it's not like a simple automobile or something. It's a very complex machine, it will behave differently. But if all this is being judged, best thing is not to raise energies, keep everybody low. Prarabdha, you suffer, what to do? Because <laughs> because if everything that happens on one space, is being judged in another space, then you can't do anything significant. So prarabdha means it is your allotted karma. How much allotment you choose itself, it's not a conscious choice, but it's a choice. How much allotment your life chooses is dependent upon how vibrant your energy is. If your energy is very effervescent and vibrant, you naturally choose more prarabdha because you know you can handle it. It is not a conscious knowing that I can handle it. Life knows, life has its own intelligence. Depending on the effervescence of your thing, this is why it's very important you don't teach a damn thing to your child. Just play, run, jump around, laugh, scream. Because life energy has to become effervescent. When if it becomes very effervescent, it will naturally download a huge volume of prarabdha. Is that not trouble? Yes, it is. But either you can store your trouble in the storehouse for it to explode in your face sometime, or you can download it and handle it. There are two ways. Anyway, it's there. You can't get rid of it, it is there. Either you bring it in and handle it, or when it falls upon you, it looks like the whole universe has turned against you, God has turned against you, creation has turned against you. People are always going through this because prarabdha download happened without them asking for it. Now being on the spiritual path means, you want the whole warehouse, I want to see what is in the warehouse. I am not interested in just dealing with my retail business. What is in my retail shop? Let me finish that stock, that is not my way. I want to finish off the warehouse. I want to set fire to the warehouse. If you want to do that, you need lots of energy, but now you are talking about setting fire to the retail shop, not even setting fire, selling off your stock. How will it help? Well, if energies are intense, it will burn out quickly. But you must know this, if you do not consciously welcome new downloads of prarabdha, which is naturally fixed into the spiritual process, nobody if they are... if they are teaching you something or you are... or you are a <laughs> book yogi, reading a book you are spiritual, that's different. If anything has been transmitted to you, always this is there that if you are running out of prarabdha, new prarabdha will come. <laughs> Many people who are here around me, they keep wondering why when I am around Sadhguru so many troubles, because that's how it is, because I want you to understand what you're calling as prarabdha is a certain amount of software. 
If you use up the software, what you should have used in hundred years, suppose you use it up in thirty years' time, that means you will die at thirty. You need to understand this. This is why most yogis burnt up their karma so fast, between thirty and thirty-five a whole lot of people have died. Just look back and see in the history, so many well-known yogis all left their bodies at that time because they burnt up everything and they had no business with the world, so they left. So, the spiritual process is always calibrated in such a way that we put a hole in your warehouse, always. If you think you solved one problem, the next dimension of problems are always trickling into your life all the time. <laughs> they should be, otherwise you will run out of your software. If you run out of software, even if your hardware is good, you ran out of software, this is becomes nothing. So it is important that we are aimed towards the sanchita or the warehouse, not just the prarabdha. So these words you picked up from the books here, there or maybe even I've used these words sometime. So the troubles anyway, we are coming out with a book called Karma Sutras being published by Random House in United States will come out in the month of February 2021. Virus, post-virus, you know. Because virus is our prarabdha, it's not our sanchita. We want to burn it up and then <laughs> do the rest. So this is called as karma sutras uh, because there are simple fundamental rules as to how to handle your karma. Don't pick up vocabulary which could confuse you. You clearly understand this. It is only because you have a certain amount of conscious and unconscious memory, you are able to function, isn't it? Now when we say prarabdha, we are talking about that dimension of memory, which is right now on within you, making you the kind of person that you are, making you do many things that you're doing, your talents, your capabilities, your incapabilities, your fears, your anxieties, everything is because of your prarabdha. If you burn this up, when you come to a certain point, it may feel like absolute freedom because your fears are gone, your anxieties are gone, this is gone. Many of you have gone through these phases. I shouldn't be talking to you like this, I should speak this only in the Sadhguru in close. But I, you know, I'm like this. I don't know where I'm in close, where I'm out close. <laughs> I'm always in close, this is the problem. Anyway, the video department will decide what is in close, what is out close from now on <laughs> So, people around me are always experiencing this, that uh, a time will come, their sadhana is, you know, reaching a place, suddenly they become very peaceful, very nice, healthy and well. Suddenly unexplained levels of struggles and problems all of a sudden. What happened? My spirituality has failed, Sad Sadhguru has ditched me <laughs> All kinds of things. No, no, it is just that uh, because we saw you're handling your software comfortably, next download happened. <laughs> Why should we call it a download? Let's call it upgrade. <laughs> software upgrade happened. It became more complex. <laughs> Any upgrade is more complex than the existing software, isn't it? Do I understand correct? It's more complex. So, a soft grade, a software upgrade happened. So now you're confused, you think Sadhguru ditched you or you're suddenly this process is not working, you must go somewhere else and learn something else. You idiot, it's working <laughs> What are So, don't think of all that. There are simple aspects of life. 
you don't need any other teaching, believe me. There is a simple process, all of you have gone through, who are here at least, inner engineering. There are five significant aspects in inner engineering and there is a practice. These five aspects, every day, you live it, every moment. You live these five aspects and practice, what you're doing there is fine. But if you want something more in terms of health, well-being, you want to transmit something in your life, then we will teach you other kinds of practices. We can upgrade the practice a little bit. But in terms of fundamental approach to how you approach yourself, these five things are enough. There is no need for one more teaching, one more teaching, one more teaching. Because you didn't get those five things, I'm continuously talking. Yes, five aspects are there. I will make this much simpler in the in-close, because now if I make it, many of you will give up doing what you're doing and try to do dumb things. <laughs> it is much simpler than five things actually. But five things, in engineering is a simple, very simple program. There are five aspects, you figure it out what these five are and make it a living reality for you, everything will change. Everything will change, it does not mean everything is gone. No, no, no. You becoming more competent to handle all this nonsense, your nonsense, all right? It's your stuff. If it's happening within you, it must be yours, isn't it? Hello? It's happening within you, it must be yours. No, no, because somebody will tell you, you immediately see because you think Sadhguru has ditched you, you go and visit an astrologer, he tells you this uh, planet is spinning too fast. <laughs> this is happening, that is happening, this force is happening, then you go to the next black magic, magic man, he says, somebody has done something to you, we will do the pujas for you, endlessly it will go on. I'm telling you, all these things may have some influences, somebody does some black magic on you, maybe some influence, maybe the planetary positions are in a certain way, some influence. But these five things I'm talking about in the basic program of Inner Engineering, if this becomes a living reality, the planets can spin whichever way they want. Anybody can do not just black, blue, yellow, red magic also they can do. They can do whatever kind of magic, this will be fine. This will become independent of all that, that's what it means. Please make it happen for yourself. So. Yoga, yoga, yogeshwara Bhuta Bhuta Bhute Shwaraya Kala Kala Kale Shwaraya Shiva Shiva Sarve Shambha, Shambha, Mahadev.